Welcome to the Bronx Hip Hop Oral History Project. Today is Tuesday, June 11th, 2024. I'm Pastor Crespo Jr., the research librarian and archivist for the Bronx County Historical Society. Today, I am joined by James Getty, also known as J Day. Yes, sir. Yes, a sir. dancer. Yes. A breaker. Yes. And president of the Breeze team. Yes, 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 yes. Sir. Welcome, J Day. Welcome. Great to have you here and thank yeah. you for, you know, I, I know you're busy and I know you, you know, your vocation, right. you know, your, your earning comes directly from breaking right. Monday through Friday yes. and on weekends. So you being here, uh -huh. you know, means a lot right. to take time out of your busy schedule. Yes, you know? sir. Thank you. We start all of our oral histories out by asking, where do your parents come from? Tell me a little bit about each. Oh, my father... He from Virginia, Newport News, Virginia. That's where the Gettys is from. My mother's from New York, you know, Harlem. She was at Adams until she, my father came to New York and they met. Got it. And then she became a Getty. <laughs> and then they had six kids. <laughs> I'm one of the five. <laughs> and then my little brother, he the sixth one. Got it. Got it. And, uh, did, did you ever talk to your father, and did he ever explain to you why he left Virginia to come up here to New York? No, nah, I, I, I never asked, because I, I was the smaller. Got it. You, you know what year he came back? Nah, uh, no. <laughs> nah? Nah, I was the youngest. Got and it. Had my sister, he had six kids, two girls, four boys, so I was the youngest. So when I was growing up, it was like we, he was already stable, he was already stable, he had his building. He was taking care of three buildings, 308, on 47th Street, Hayford and Bradhurst, so, yeah. Got it, got it. What neighborhood are you from? Harlem. Harlem? Harlem. Straight from Harlem, man. From the hardcore Harlem. The middle of it. On 147th Street, Hayford and Bradhurst. All right. Now, growing up in Harlem, you know what I'm saying? You got a, you got a young James Getty, a young J-Day right. coming out in elementary school. You, right. you walk out of your house. Tell me, what do you see? What do you hear? What's Harlem when, like when, when you're when, a kid? When, when I was growing up, when I was coming up and I was young, it wasn't all fun and games. It was crack killing. You had the gangsters out there, the mob people, everybody. You know what I'm saying? They right. doing their thing, but you always had to have a path for if you're going to stay in this era or you're going to stay in this era. So I chose dancing. A lot of people chose other things. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then I met up with Blockatron <laughs> and Terry Ice, and nice. I knew where I was going to be after that. Got it, got it. What, what, what year were you born? That we put it in the context? 1969. 1969. September 6th. All right, Virgo, baby. I got a month on you, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a month. A month. <laughs> a month. Yeah. It meant a lot when you were in elementary school, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. definitely. You know? So what kind of music did you uh were you influenced with at home? What kind of oh, music did your parents mom. listen to? See, my parents and them they was musicians themselves. Talk to me about yeah, that. Yeah, they. My father used to sing. My mother used to sing. My sister, Godfather Randy, used to play the drums. We lived like we had the building three hundred eight. We lived in the basement. They would come out their basement, set up the equipment right there in front of the basement, and start playing it. The instruments, yeah. the drums, start singing for the block and stuff like that. So wow. that, and then they was listening to Marvin Gaye, Stylistic, Blue Magic, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. So I was growing up on that. Right. I was gonna ask you, were there any like you know house parties or anything? But but it, it looks like your, your, your dad brought it out from the yeah, basement to the front of yeah, the house. Yeah, yeah, that was our house parties, and, and we couldn't even go to the house parties. So. <laughs> My mother and them had parties in the basement. We had to be in the room, but we'd sneak out and do all that. But yeah, wasn't no parties. It awesome. was grown up parties. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, and uh, you know, I failed during the intro. You know, just to make sure people know that we got, you know, Lockatron. Oh yeah, I got Lockatron, one of the founders of the Breeze team, right there, the Lockatron, Hello. and then I got Zone TDK. Part of the Breeze team, Breeze team Transformers. Welcome, yes, guys. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
these gentlemen showed up to make sure, you know, J Day got some support yes, during sir. this interview. Yes, Thank sir. you guys. Yes, yes, yes. Cool. Hey, so uh what was a typical meal at home? What was your favorite? My favorite is when she cooked some cornbread, some baked macaroni and cheese, collard greens, oxtail. That was my favorite. But other than that, we was eating beans, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah. So, a a as a kid up in Harlem, you know, a lot of times we like to ask, you know, uh, wh what kind of kids' games did you enjoy? You know, I guess we're talking elementary school, middle school, you know, on the block. I ain't played no games. It wasn't no games for me. Gotcha. It was all about trying to get out and, and try to make something of myself because right. it was hard in Harlem. It was so hard, you know, so, you know what I'm saying? You, you just had to choose a path, so it wasn't no games. It was just all about trying to dance and get myself up there to be on TV and do this and do that. Got it. Yeah. What, what elementary school did you go to? Oh, IS-10. PS200, IS-10. Your same school Mr. Nice went to. <laughs> got it, got it. So you knew Mr. Nice all the way in elementary school? Yeah. Any and any other dancers uh, in elementary school with you? No, I had my, um, um, Daryl, Mike, Daryl and Mike. That's it, and some other people. Yeah, I forgot their names. Got it, yeah, got it. yeah, yeah. Um, were you um b before breaking? You know, were were you influenced by Burning or the Rock Dance at all? I, I was inspired by Ivan. What? He was on Soul Train. I seen him breaking, you know what I'm saying, flipping, breaking. I was like, I want to do that. I want to be like that. You know? What year was that when you first saw him on Soul uh, Train? I, don't know. I was like 80s, like, like the 80s, God. something like that. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, you know be, be, before I get deeper into dancing and everything, I just want to make sure you know you you were talking about you know the the rough life in Harlem and everything, yeah. you know. Which gangs were out there? Now, elementary school, you're in the 70s, right? right? You know, what gangs were present, you know, in Harlem at that time, in your neighborhood? You had, that's when Jewel Nation was a gang. They had their chapters. You had ball busters. You had, you had a whole bunch of gangs. Me at that, everybody was out there. So, yeah. You, you, you named two heavyweights at the time. Yeah. That's that's for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ball busters, all of them, man. all of the cats, man. When when was the first time you saw someone breaking, b boying, popping? You know that caught your interest, and you remember. You remember what year it was? What what grade in school? Mm -hmm. Let me see. I think I was in. Sixth, seventh grade, sixth or seventh grade. I used to write the robot. It was the robot and all that. All right. Was, you know what I'm saying? So they doing a robot. I'm like, yo, that's dope too, yo. So I was doing it because I was I was boogieing first, right? Before I started breaking. Okay. So it was all about trying to get my boogie on. Yeah. For, for, for the world out there, you know, you mentioned breaking and you mentioned boogieing. Right. Tell the world, what's the difference? Well, um, breaking is footwork, tap, rap, and all that. Boogieing is ways, touch. Right. That's boogieing. Yeah. You know? And coming up, if I'm not mistaken, most crews, uh -huh. you know, had poppers, right. had lockers. Right. They had electric boogies. Right, yeah. But they weren't b-boys. No. Nah. Right. Nah. Like, when, when we was doing it, it was like... I was the only breaker. Right. Okay. I was the only breaker. It was always poppers and lockers and no breakers. What breakers? Right, right. I was the only breaker. And then we start bringing in breakers. So God, start, God. start looking for breakers and bringing them into our crew. Like Eddie Ed, he was one breaker we found in Polar Grounds. He, he was coming from um, Job Corps and we seen him. We brought him in, so it was two breakers <laughs> in the breeze. 
Right, right, right. Early on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Wow, wow. What, what, what year did you start the Breeze team? Uh, that was like, what, 80s, lot? A lot of times it helps me to think about 80s, your, the grade you 80s, were in. 80s, 80s, the 80s. The 80s, 80s. That's when the Breeze team came. God, I got to go. I went to you in 85. Yeah. Yeah, we were already Breeze. We were already Breeze team. Yeah. Well, and, and what, where'd you get the name from? And and the concept. I mean, you're a young man. You're a right. kid. Uh -huh. You know, I'm gonna create the breeze team. This is this is huge. Well, I, I, I was a kid. Lockatron and Terry was the oldest one. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So they started coming up. We started naming, trying to figure out what name we were gonna become and all that. We just figured out on our own, all of us together. All right. Breeze team. All right. And out, out of all the different street dances, what? What makes J Day? What what do you popularize? You know, boogieing, popping, or breaking? No, uh, I master in footwork. Back in the days, they used to call me Floor Master Getty, and then I changed my name to J Day. Got it, got it. So I'm a master of the footwork. All right. Yeah. You 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 had broken down a little earlier that that breaking was top rocking. Yeah. You know, floor work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Style. Yeah. Let, let us know the, the, those elements, you know, that, that makes a, a well-rounded breaker. Breaker. See, being a breaker, you got to have staff. First of all, you can't go out there and start on power moves. You got to learn from the basics, tight rock, footwork, and then come the other stuff. Yeah. You ain't got footwork, you ain't got tight rock, you ain't no breaker or a b-boy. Right, right. You just doing power, that's it. You gotta learn the basics. From your experience, where does that footwork come from? You know, what what were there other dances out there that became top rocking? Yeah, King Up Rock. You know what I'm saying? Right, he, right. he the master of that. You know what I'm saying? Spy. Spy. You know, yeah. Spy, he footwork, his stuff was nice. I love this stuff, bro. Yeah. So then my man's right there. Yeah. All right. All right. And um, so, but you also go by a different title, right? You're a street hitter. I'm a hitter. A hitter. A hitter. Street hitter. You got it right. Cool. Street hitter. Tell, tell me, what's a street hitter? A street hitter is not a crew, but a family who, who go downtown and midtown and make money to support their families, their kids, their mother, father, whoever. So that's what you call a hitter, because we out there every day going out there hitting, hitting hard. Right. <laughs> even even if the crowd's not really there, we still hitting hard, trying to do what we got to do. God, God. Are there any big difference? Before I get into the differences, what's a b-boy in your words? A b-boy is, is, a b-boy is a cat that practice in the studio. You know what I'm saying? Got it. A breaker is a breaking on the streets. <laughs> so, so b boy is different from breakers in the street. We breakers and hitters. Got it. They b boy studio dancers. Got it. B girl studio dancing. You know what I'm saying? So it's a difference. Right. It was always a difference. That's why when it, when it was so called played out, they stopped. What, what, what years was it played out? I could say going in to like the 90s. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Everything just start fading away. Yeah, it, it's fascinating because uh, a, a lot of a lot of b-boys and a lot of breakers kind of say that there were two eras when breaking kind of faded. 79, you know, and then the mid 80s to the early 90s, you know, mm -hmm. so... You know, that's that second stage right? Right, for you. Right. What year did you start breaking? I started breaking in the 80s. In the 80s? 80s. God. Yeah. The 80s, like the mid 70s going into the 80s. 70s, 80s. Yeah, something like that. What gave you, and then back to that question that, that I delayed, what gave you the idea to create your own crew? It was three of us. We just like, yo, it's three of us. We just need more members. So that's when um, my man Flip came and played. First it was Terry, Lockatron, me, then Flip, 
then Booba came, then Nice came, then Sideguy came, then Boogie Mike came, then Darren Mike came. <laughs> then we start just having this big family on the Breeze team. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So, you know, back, back to the breaking thing. You got top rock or up rocking, mm -hmm. and then you got the floor work. Right. But you still got footwork right. on the floor. Right. And you got power moves right. and freezes. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, break down, you know, the, the different power moves, you know, especially the ones that you implemented oh. and you performed. Me? Mine was combinations, swipes, windmills, to turtles. My specialty was turtles. Everybody loved my turtles. They was fast as hell. <laughs> so oh, yeah. everybody loved my turtles. So yeah, it was like flipping. Um, just creating off the head every time I dance. I, I never had a set routine. I always just come off the head and just do anything. Right. And then I make it a routine after that. Yeah. Right. And um, so, you know, when, when I talk to the B-boys from, from the different crews throughout the city, they always talk about battling, mm -hmm. you know, going to a neighborhood or going to a club and battling. Mm -hmm. Was that strictly a B-boy thing or did hitters battle? Were there occasions, you know, when street hitters nah, battled? hitters That's battles. Hitters, right, who'd, you, who'd you battle? Hitters, hitters battle. Got it. Like back in the days, we used to battle Breeze team against Flokerman. Right. They street hitters too. Got it. But they, they, they some of them still dance, some of them don't. Got and it. Some of them passed away. And you, the float committee, what, what year or time frame, you know, grade of school you were in when they were out and you were battling them? They was out before us. They like Greece, they, they the ones who like introduce us to the um, street. Got it. Because one of them used to live like on Briarhurst. Like down, like on Fifty Something Street in Bradhurst. We lived on Forty Seventh Street in Bradhurst. They used to come with the cart with the drums in there and go up the hill because you got to pass us to do a Hundred Forty Fifth Street D train right there. Right. So they used to see us out there. And they asked us to come down there one day, and we did. And after that, it was history. Talk to us about that. Yeah. Did you you battled them then? Nah, it, it's like we was down there, but we knew Jax. So it was always like they didn't they want to test the waters. All right, test our waters if you want. Right. We ain't your average dancers, man. <laughs> Word up. So we just start battling every time we seen them and all this and all that. And we became friends and all that after that. Cool. Yeah. cool. Now, when we talk about breaking, mm -hmm. you know, we talk about those, the break beats and those those anthems, those b-boy anthems or those breaker anthems, you know, which one was your top or top? Three? I'm telling you, one was Just Begun. Man. Just Begun? Just Begun was my joint. You give me Just Begun, I'm going down like crazy. You can't stop me. Word. Got it. I like all, all breakdown beats, Pack the Jam, all, all this, Electric Kingdom, all, all the beats. I love them all. You just throw on any beat, I'm gonna get busy. It ain't gotta be a special beat. Got it. Yeah. It, it seems like just by the nature of street hitters, you guys are traveling. Mm -hmm. You guys are moving. You guys aren't like, you know, this is the Breeze team, you know, hood right here. This is this is where we do our thing. You guys were everywhere. Right, right. You know? Uh -huh. And did you come across regular B-boy crews? Yeah, we did. Like, when we danced in the city, Back in the days, like everybody who came from overseas and all that, always checked in with us and always find their way with us and dancing with us. All right. And then after they learned what they can learn, they left and they did their own thing. And we respect that. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? As long as you give us that credit and respect us too. You, you, any overseas breakers in particular? Yeah, um, Storm, Gumby. Um, Engine from Japan, Ding from Japan, um, Yoko, she from Japan, she was down with us. It, it's, a, it's a bunch. Got it. It's a bunch, yeah. Yeah, can, can you talk to us about the venues, the locations that the Breeze team would hit to make their money, the, the top locations, and give us a few stories about 
any memorable the top mm -hmm. locations our, our spot was always 58th and 5th when the breeze team first started 58th and 5th avenue across the street from fao swartz it ain't there no more because they got an apple joint store there now. but that that's where we used to hit at and then we hit across the street um from there um the gold statue where wow. central park zoo is at we danced there and we danced uh, um South Street Seaport. All right, down the Lower East Side. Right, Wall Street. We used to dance with it. Um, 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 it's got to park. Right, and uh, um, where all trade centers was at, we used to dance right there. At the plaza. Yeah, but once that fell, we stopped dancing over there and all that. Um, where else? 42nd Street, Broadway. Um, Lincoln Center over there, 65th Street, 72nd Street, where we did the commercial at, me and Nice. Yeah, a whole bunch of places. And, and Staten Island Ferry. Staten Island Ferry. And we, um, we traveled, too, to dance, too. All right. We um, stayed in, I was in Boston for like 10, 10 years. Wow. 10 years in Boston. Talk to me about Boston. Are there any uh, B-Boy or Breaker crews up in yeah, Boston? Yeah, yes. The, um, like the second half of the Breeze team is still out there. What year was that? The years when you were in Boston, those 10 years? That was like, what? 2001? And you was in South Africa. I was in Africa in 94. Um, but that was like in 201, 2000. All right. Like and I came back at the, uh, when the pandemic hit Got and stayed in New York because things wasn't going right on the streets of dancing 42nd Street. Got it. Everybody fighting. Ain't no leader out there. So everybody doing their own thing. You know what I'm saying? All they needed was a leader. Right. So I came back and I just got stuff back in order. Got it, got it. And um, you, you had mentioned Lincoln Center. Right. You know, um, did you ever go to that, you know, uh, renowned 19, you know, 80 Lincoln Center? Rock Stadium was there? Yeah. yeah, yeah. There were a lot of crews there, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I peeped it out. Yeah, can you talk to us about your memories of, of yeah, I was young, being at so. that? <laughs> yeah, it was dope. Uh, I like it. I was like, yeah, breaking is going somewhere. And I love this. God, it, God. it was a good experience for me. All right. Now, uh, you had mentioned South Africa. You know, right. can you talk to us about any tours that you went on overseas? Yeah, we was in Africa um, in 94. We went after the apartheid was over. Got it. When they was just cleaning up Africa. We was in um, South Africa. Who'd you go with? We went with the, um, the crew, Rough Rug and Raw. It, was, it wasn't a breeze team. Like... <laughs> We rappers too, we okay. MCs. So it was, we had a group called um, the Funk Brigade. You know, um, Big Pun, he was down with his group on um, Full Eclipse, MOF, um, Rough Rugged and Raw, that was I'm um, Rugged, Nice was Raw, and Rough, he was uh, um, Rough, <laughs> he was Rough. So it's Rough Rugged and Raw. And 94, we got to go to Africa, so the rappers went to Africa. But we still danced out there. We rapped and danced so at the same time. Then um, Nice Cousin, um, DeVell, he came. He had the beats and all that, so he did the beats for us, so it was us. And we was in Johannesburg, Durban, Cape Town, and Paswana. Wow. Yeah, we met the um, king, a swagman. We, we met our Mandela grandson. We was chilling with them. Our last show, like some people couldn't get in. We was like, yo, let everybody in who ain't got no money. Let them all in. We just let everybody in. And we rocked it. It was nice. We was on tour with a group that um, did a song for Mandela when he came out of jail. So we was on tour with them. Yeah. All right. All right. I mean, uh, can you name some of the MCs that, that were down with your crew? Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, back to the Breeze team. You oh, know. the MCs? Yeah. Skip Mahoney, 
Um, rest in peace, Skip Mahoney. Dessa. Um, Prince Tafari. Nice, rough, me. Um, L Boogie. It was a whole bunch of us. Um, Tyshawn, Baby Hugs, my man Dreads. It was a whole bunch of us. That we were signed to um, Mrs. Robertson label in Jersey. That the old school rappers was sugar and help. Yeah, we were signed to them. They used us at, try to use us as tax write offs. So we had to go in there and be like, yo, I had to call my boys, release us. I don't care about no money. I don't care about no deal. I don't care about the money you gave us. You know, y'all playing with us, you know. So they let us go. They don't owe them nothing. Right. Yeah. Got it. Now, you know, when when, when I talk to the the breaking crews out there, you know, like, you know, Dynamic, you know, and New York City Breakers, everybody had a club that they would go to, right? And as far as I understood, I mean, it was all left up to the DJ, whatever break beats he threw down, right. you know? But this is a living for you. Right. You going out to the street, right. you know what I'm saying? Were there any DJs that helped, you know, kind of get those break beats down so you guys can perform out there or, you know, you yeah, put your had, own tapes together? We Nah, we had, well, Zone was one of them that always have our songs together. Lady B, the radio right. station. Right, so that's Lady what he, B, yeah. Power, power 89, just before you throw 92K around. Right. And um awesome too. Who else? Who else? Who else did I oh um my man Tyrone, we call him Soundwave. Yeah. He always had all the beats for us. Yeah. Yeah. He still got <laughs> I mean he still got all the beats on cassette tape and everything. Oh, that's an archive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we call I named him Soundwave. Because he always had the sounds for us, you know. And then for our beats. We had drums in the beginning. Yeah. Okay. We had drums, so that's where Locker Talk played in. All right. So we was using drums. Wasn't no radio when we started. It was just drum. After we, he went to the army and everything. Then the radios and all that came out. We started using the radio. That's when we met Zone and all that. Yeah. Sweet, sweet. You know, do you, do you ever remember a? Cause I, I know you're a choreographer too, right? You know, choreographer. Yeah, 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 you know, you remember, uh, you know, the best, you know, choreography in your mind. You know, that just sticks with you. Wow, man, I did good on that one. Mm -hmm. That routine. The um basketball routine. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, basketball routine. Cause I I don't choreograph that into something different. Talk to us about that. I mean, you, you brought a basketball out there to dance with. Yeah, um, I was in San Francisco. And I seen this this dude, he was like playing with the ball and then he did something with the ball and rolled. And I was like, yo, I need to master that, you know? So ever since I was in um San Francisco, I mastered it. And then I brought it to New York. And then I started showing everybody that. Everybody that everybody was like, yo, that's dope. And then I started doing um teaching my cousin it, and, and we got a routine together, rough. We did it with KRS-One on one of his joints at SOBs. Yeah. Right. How, how'd you get hooked up with KRS-One? How, how did that happen the first time you met him? Oh, um, you know, um, Quick, Quick Step, mm -hmm. Rockefeller. Well, Quick Step threw a jam. I forgot where it was. And he asked me, Nice, and Rough to come. I think he was performing rapping. And then we did the spit. <laughs> but we didn't know KRS one was there. He was in the back. And then he seen he seen that spit on the head joint. And he was like, yo, start talking to my brother, yo, I need them telling his manager, yo, get their number. Uh, such and such. And he gave us we gave him the number and all that. Then after that, it was history. We became brothers. His wife became my sister. His kids became my nephews and nieces, and it was a good thing. Man. What year was that around about? I could say in like uh, 2000. God. Yeah. We was with him for like 10 years. We did step into a world where 
That's what brought breaking and graffiti and all that back on the map. Ah, so that's a yeah, like so he, he treated us right. I understand him. He taught me knowledge. He taught me about hip hop, the meaning of hip hop, all that. He's a good dude. Yo. All right. I wouldn't dance with nobody but him. Is, is there anything in particular about the knowledge and the philosophy of hip hop that he broke down to you that you'd like to pass to us? Just stay true to hip hop, man. Don't cross over. Don't let nobody tell you different. Why? Just be who you are. Sure. Any now, were, you were down with BDP. Yes. You know. Yeah. Still you, is. You still are. Yeah. Yeah, cause I, I I saw you in some photos wearing some gear, and I saw you know you and Mr. Nice, and it said BDP on. Right. It. Yeah. Man, yeah. we still BDP. We will never stop being BDP. We never stop being KRS One dancers. We're gonna always be dancers. Got it. Yeah. Uh, um. Any other uh, videos or, or events, you know, that the uh, that you or the Breeze team participated in? You like to uh, share? Yeah, we did a, a a Broadway joint called Warrior Ant. It was a big production joint. Um, what um that school? Was Brooklyn Academy. Brooklyn Academy. Yeah. So we did that. Um, we did an off Broadway play. Um, we did a Sprite commercial. They did the, um, we did movies called um, Phone Booth. It's a whole bunch of stuff. You know, we got history. It's, it's too much. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. Uh, you know, you ever perform, I mean, uh, other than with KRS-One, any other celebrities? Yeah, um, in Staten Island, we, we performed with, um, Force and D. Got it. Yeah. I, I used to live in Staten Island, so, you know what I'm saying? My sister-in-law knew them, so she had us come out there and do stuff for them. Yeah. Got it. And uh, were, were there any, and I know street hitters, you know, you, you're there to make a living, you right. know, you ain't got time to go hit the club, but did you go to any clubs, you know? Yeah, after hitting, we always went to clubs. We went to um, Savoy. Boston we went to Ballroom. Boston Road Ballroom, s and um, um, Club, Roseland, Roseland, what um, Latin, Quarters, Latin Quarters, the original Latin, Latin Quarters, um, the Tunnel. Um, it was all these places. Seventy One, yeah. yeah. Studio Fifty Four, all these places. All right. You, you got any memories of you know, breaking, you know, and doing your thing out in these clubs? Yeah, yeah. Roxy. All right. Yeah. Share, share with us that. Yeah. You know, any yeah. memories of the Roxy? Yeah, watching New York City and uh, these cats go at it in Roxy's all the damn time. Who's Steady. this? It's, no, Rock Steady in New York City. Floor Master. Because Floor Master. Everybody was battling in there, man. I was just watching. What years were these? Young cats, man. Like the 80s. Early 80s. Early. Early. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Any other crews, you know, at, at the Roxy you run up against? Nah, I ain't go up against nobody. All right. So you didn't battle when you went out there. You just went up there to check out the breakers. I, look. <laughs> I wasn't battling nobody. I was still a young buck. All right. I was. So after I started getting my stuff together, yeah, I was battling. I battled everybody in their mama. All right. Can you tell I us? Even, I even battled um, Ken Swift. Ken Swift. Yeah. Tell yeah. us about the uh, the battle against your battle against Ken Swift. Oh well. When when was that? That was like back to Mecca, right? No, um, I think Violet was doing a show. Violet? Yeah, she was doing a show, and we went. I think it was like on Hunt 16, somewhere over yeah. there. Well, she it was at a school, and we all went. Breeze team, the second um, chapter of Breeze team went, and um. Now you say second chapter, second generation. Second generation. Um, they went, they was in the stands, and um, I seen um, Ken Swift, and I walked down, and I walked up to him. I was like, um, who was filming when uh, on Crazy Legs was battling with K-Mel? He was like, why? Why are you asking me that? I was like, I just want to know, because they was, like, popping mad junk and shit. That's my nephew, yo, like. 
Yeah. I just want to know. Like, yo, don't don't ask me that. Don't ask me that. I'm like, yo, I used to look up to you, B. I know. He said, you know what? Yeah, I know who you is, man. All right, you want to be like that? All right, I walked off. He followed me. Don't follow me, B. Yeah. You messed up by following me. So he followed me into this door on the outside. Everybody else seen, nice, rough, everybody. Came down, little boy eight, came in the hallway, pushed his boy to the side. Me and you now. They, they was like, battle. I was like, all right, let's battle. Let's go. Let's go for it. He went down, but he just a skit dancer. I like to tell him that all the time. You just a skit dancer. What does that mean? You go down, do a little move, and get back up. See, I'm a hitter. I stay on the ground. I stay on the ground long. You know what I'm saying? I just don't do like one or two moves and get up. So he, I kept doing that. He kept doing the skits. And I won. He wanted to talk after my cousin was like, you don't want to talk. Who's your cousin again? Ruff. All right. He talked to us a little about Ruff. Was he a breaker, B-boy? Ruff, uh, Ruff, a breaker. He was down with us. I taught him how to rap and all that. Wrote his first rhyme. Now he's a, a great MC. So Ruff was like, yo, he don't want to talk to you. Just leave him alone. Let him be. So ever since then, me and him never talked since. Wow. Since. What year was that then? Like... Uh, I could say the 90, like 97, 98, something like that. Go ahead. Got it. And, uh, you know, so right now, you know, breaking, right? It's, I think it's, it's reached all kind of, you know, phenomenal international heights. Right. You know, I, I hear a lot of B-boys and a lot of breakers telling me it's bigger in Asia and, and in Europe. It is. You know, and uh, it is. that's it is. awesome. So it's bigger bigger everywhere. All right. And so what do you think about the uh, the Olympics, you know, coming yeah. up now, you know, 2024 Summer Olympics in Paris? I'm, I'm glad they're doing it. I'm glad we get a, uh, a platform to show our stuff. And, and I give praise to everybody who entered in that and doing their thing. Just represent. That's it. So we can keep this going. All right. All right. I definitely love that. Cool. Any, anything about breaking I can ask you or the Breeze team that you want to make sure, you know, we know about? Yeah, um, my nephews, Boo, Sam, Chubbs, Frank, Two Steps Away, the whole crew. Them, the new generation that's coming up, that's going to hold down the streets when we go. You know what I'm saying? So they out there now. You know what I'm saying? So they holding it down. I want to give thanks to them for keep doing what they doing and keeping hip hop alive and um, showing everybody else the way we show them how to hit. All right. You know, sticking with that, you know, um, these young bloods that are, that are keeping it alive, you know, especially for the Breeze team, right? Right. You know, uh, you know, who are they? Who are these new young guys with the Breeze team today out there, active? Oh, they they um my nephews, my sister kids, and, and they crew, two steps away. And one of my nephews danced with me, that's Chubbs. He that Breeze team. So they all Breeze team. Everybody down there is Breeze team. Everybody down there family. So we taught my nephews, and they taught their friends. You know what I'm saying? So all of them is down there. All of them is doing what they're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, you a teacher now. You ain't no follower. You a teacher. So teach everybody what we taught you. And that's it. Right. <laughs> that's, that's, that's awesome. You know, um, what's, what's, what's the future of breaking right now, in your opinion? You know, where's it going? You know, not just the hitters on the streets, but breaking, you know, well, I see it. I see it going into more movies. <laughs> I see it going into worldwide, everywhere, um, Broadway plays, all types of stuff. 
It's just getting bigger and bigger because it was died down. Now it's, it's up here. Man. Got it, got it. You know what I'm saying? We got the Olympics. You got movies getting ready to come out with dancing in it and all that. So it's going places. All right. And um, so what, what's the next move for the Breeze team? You know, I mean, were, were you, you know, any, any, any events coming yeah, down? Th this, this next um, project is a documentary and, and a movie we're working on. We're trying to get a movie rolling about us dancing in the streets, how we came up, how the cops arrested us, took our radios, drum sets, money, and how we fought to make it possible for the young generation to hit on the streets right now. That, you know, and that's really interesting, right? I mean, uh, you know, cops, you know, breaking you up. Let, let's go way back. What was your experience with the cops when you first started hitting on the streets and earning a living? What was that relationship like? Did you have to, like, ah, uh, here, here comes 5-0, grab yeah, your stuff yeah, and move yeah, out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like we, we on the corner and we, we dancing, but we still got somebody looking out for the cops. You know what I'm saying? So if they do come, we, we had somebody take the bucket or take the drums or the radio and jet, and we would just stand there. Like, we would talk to the cops. We'd be like, what happened? Uh, Y'all can't do it here, uh, such and such. All right, once they leave, we back at them. That's it. You're not going to stop us. We're not doing nothing wrong. Right. We just dancing. So if you're going to stop us from dancing, half of them going to go out there and go rob and steal them. You know what I'm saying? Like half of people who was down with us did that because of the cops. They were like, nah, I can't do this no more, man. I might as well sell drugs, man. Cops stopping us, we getting arrested. But us, we kept it going. You're not going to stop us. We're going to keep it going. Yeah. What was the, the reaction from the crowds? You're performing. You're nah, doing the crowds, your thing. When, 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 when the cops come in the middle of our show and they come in the middle, crowd be like, boo, ah, leave them alone, leave them alone. And the cops be like, all right, when they pick your pockets, don't say nothing. So they always blame it on pickpockets. Nah, we don't have pickpockets in our crowd. We make sure of that. We watch everybody. We make sure of that. And I was the, always the one who always watched it, too. Right. Yeah. Giving, giving that false narrative of who you guys were. Right, right. We not that. Saying. So now it's possible for us to dance now. The cops don't stop us no more. They ride with us. We ride with them. They help us. We help them. And that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. You know, how is it today with, 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 right. with the cops on the streets? Nah, they cool. They cool. They cool. Sergeant, captains, everybody. You know, they cool. They respect us. We respect them. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you had sent me some footage uh, yesterday. Yeah. You yeah, know, there yeah. were protesting things going on. Yeah, right. and, and you were working with the cops. Right, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, talk definitely. to us about what happened. And, and, um, and We was on, on 46th and 45th and Broadway. And we was dancing. And then we heard all this noise. Ah, horns and all that. Move your car. Ah, move it. So me and my um, nephew, Chubbs, we got up. We like, Yo, let's go see what's going on. Because they're going to stop our money doing that. So we went over there. It was the migrants. And um, they was blocking the streets and all that. They went and let people that that riding the bikes with the tourists go by. They in there with the kids. And the migrants or the protesters? The um, protesters. It was the migrants. That's, the, that's what the protest was about. And... Um, they wouldn't let the cars go through, so the captain, the sergeant, everybody trying to move them. But they couldn't move them. So I came over there. Y'all got to move. Move this right now. Move it. Yo, y'all can have a peaceful protest without blocking stuff. People got to go. People got to go to work. People got to go home. People got to take their kids home. Y'all going to move. Nah, you ain't moving, y'all ain't moving. Telling the cops, yo, tell them cops, like, I ain't got nothing to do with that. You gonna move. All right, he rolled the window up. I went right around. You're gonna move. They moved it. They moved it. They definitely moved it. They moved it into a block. That way the traffic on Broadway can move. So, yeah. Right, right. I had to do my duty. 
I hear you. I hear you. Who was out there with you uh, performing? Um, it was me, my nephew, Bruce, um, you, you, two steps away, my other family, my other nephews, and that's it. If, if I wanted to go out, I didn't raise my kids here in New York. Right. I raised them overseas, and when they come, they always want to do New York things. Right. I, I want to go take them to watch you hitters perform. Yeah, yeah. Do Where it. am I going to go? You go to 46th and 45th and Broadway. We right there by Sephora. If we ain't by Sephora, we right there by the Red Steps in the back. Yeah. Yeah, you see us all the time. Morning, noon, and night. Doing your thing and Doing earning night. your living. Yes, yes. I'll be out there like 8 o'clock. <laughs> You know, so, and I know these questions sound, but, you know, it's for everyone else. What, how has b-boying and breaking, you know, and street dancing changed your life? It changed my life because I could have been dead or in jail somewhere, living in um, Harlem. Because there was so much going on, you know what I'm saying? It's like, some, some people went to crack, some people went to selling it. Some people went to shooting it. So I watched all that. And it's like heartbreaking sometimes to even talk about it sometimes because right. it was like family members was doing it. And you know what I'm saying? So it was like type hard. So I had to make a choice on what I was going to do because I seen so much. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I was like, Dancing just saved my life throughout everything. It just saved my life and it put me in the right path. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I, that's how I got to um, have respect for my community and all that. Cause I was raised by Mr. Chick. He he was a community. Uh, he like had the day camps and blocked the streets off and on 8th Avenue and all that. He had the jazz mobile out there and all that. He gave us all our shows in Harlem. And he taught us how to come together with your community. And that right there is what I brought to the Bronx after I left. God bless his soul, Mr. Chick. He was a good man. He taught us how to, you know what I'm saying, have a community behind you. And that's what we did in the Bronx when we went to the Bronx. Went right. to the Bronx. Yeah. Are you living in the Bronx now? Yes, yes. Right. Where are you from now? I'm from Allerton now. Allerton? Yeah. Not far, you can walk. Yeah, I walked there. <laughs> I walked there. I went right. straight down Allerton, got here, and walked up. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I live in um, Allerton now. Because right. yeah. we was living on, on 170 on Marlins, but my two nephews got killed. Nice sons, fantastic, and um, and Tay Mufasa. So, yeah. right. you know, that's you know, you and, and you hear from B boys and breakers. You know, it's it's the escape. It's the it's that positive choice you're making, yeah. as opposed to turning in the streets and earning a living that way. Right. You know, um, I, I I saw you at a at a few events. Mm -hmm. You know, for for you. And I and I appreciate seeing you there and supporting. Right. You know, um, what do you think about all of these uh, events that these old b boys and these rockers, you know, and these breakers are throwing? I mean, it's pretty cool. The no, Dollar Jam, the King it's, Up Rock. It's, it's cool because the hitters never went to nothing like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just like I said, we was always different. Right. And me, I was. <laughs> you could call me the mad b boy of the world back then. But I ain't like that no more. So I'm straight, and that's why people didn't really want to mess with us because I always told the truth. Like, y'all got to give us respect, you know. Y when y'all stopped doing it, we kept doing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, give us some type of credit, you know. Because like, right. if we would have stopped, it would have been gone. Yeah. For real, it would have been gone. History. No breaking downtown, no 42nd Street, no nothing. Even these cats wouldn't be doing it. So.
That's 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 awesome. Any any events coming up that you're gonna attend? Oh yeah, um, I'm going to back the mecca. I'm going to uh, a bar a battle of the boroughs, and then Quick Step got his birthday coming up on the 27th. So I'm going to there too. So June 27th. Yes. Where, where's he? Where's Quick Step throwing that event? What's that? The uh, Bogart. 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 The old beast. The old Trading. beast. Yeah. Yeah. That's in Brooklyn. Yeah. Williamsburg. Yeah. All right, all right. And we got uh, Kings in New York coming up too. Yeah. Now, New York. now you talked about, you know, uh, I guess the B boy world, you know, and, and the hitter world, you know, it's one world, but really you you guys in the past have been separated. Separate. You know, is you see it now today? No, nah, because converging. Once I made men's with Quick Step, you know what I'm saying. That's when everything just started piling back on together. We started getting with the the B boys now. You know what I'm saying. That's why I'm so into these events now. That's why they gave us our awards. That talk, day. talk to us. I was going to ask you about that recognition you received. Who gave you that recognition and when? Um, it was um, New York City Breakers, London and Speedy. They um, said they want to honor us for um, keeping breaking alive on the streets and keeping it going. And I'm happy for that. Wow. So yeah. B-Boys are reaching out to the hitters. Yes, yes. They yeah. tour together. You yeah. Yeah. Me and London tour together. Me and Quick Step tour together. Me and uh, Rock Rockefeller tour together. All of us tour together with KRS One. So, all right. I keep hearing the name a lot, you know, and B girls, you know, are, are not getting a lot of credit out here. Yeah. Talk uh, to me about Rockefeller and Rockefeller and... was down with us first. All right. Yeah. Before so, she met um, um, Quick Step, she was down with um, Breeze Team Transformers. That's me and Zone crew. You know what I'm saying? Because Zone had his group. You know, we got. When the first Breeze team from Harlem broke up, met up with Zone. Me and Nice got one him. His crew was um, Transformers. We was the Breeze team. So we just combined Breeze team Transformers. You know what I'm saying? Then we started recruiting. And then Rocker, Rockefeller came. She was down with us. She was dancing with us. All that. Yeah, was no girl hitters. Was no girl hitters, right? Japanese. Yeah, Yuko. That's it. And your niece? Yeah, my niece. Yeah. Who's your niece? I'm Toya. All right. She she older now. She 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 was out there dancing. We had her out here out there. Hired my nephew, Columbus. They were the first. They was my first two niece and nephew to dance. They was the first two. Then came everybody else. Talk to us about uh, touring with uh, B Boy Rockefeller. London. Oh, London it, uh, and Rockefeller, please yeah, don't let me know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that's how, like, uh, going back to when we met KRS One. We uh, he seen us. He said he wanted us to go on tour with him. He said, "Yo, I'm doing Madison Square Garden with Public Enemy." I was like, "Yo, you doing Madison Square Garden?" He's like, "Nah, we doing Madison Square Garden." Sweet. With public giving, I was like, "Oh man, we did that, man!" After that, it was me, Rockefeller, Quick Step, and Nice, and uh, yeah, and Nice, and we all went on tour with him. Back then. We stayed with him. We did Step Into a World, did all that. Then Rockefeller and Quick Step, they left, and then they started doing their own thing. And that's when we started beefing and all that, and. That's when I, ah, but now we we friends and we older now. And, but the tour was dope with us. Now, I mean, KRS-One and BDP, they're up there for right. me. You know, um, but Public Enemy. Yeah, you yeah. Know, it mean, was dope. To do talk, talk to me about touring with them and it performing was, it with was, them. It was dope, man, because I never got to see them up in person and be close to them like that, you know? So me being there, they just coming, talking to Karen's one while we in the dressing room and all that. I'm like, look at this, yo. Listen, I'm here, just... yo. I'm here. I'm here. I'm, I'm ready, yo. This is going to be a lot. 
Yeah, so it was good to see them, especially um, um, Flavor Flav, because he lived in the Bronx too, on the golf course. All right. So, yeah. The, the, uh, outside of that tour, you, you ever roll with Public Enemy, any videos, nah, nah, any nah, other? Nah, nah, nah. It was just all about my loyalty was with KRS One. Gotcha. <laughs> that's the only one. Loyalty. Well, that's it. Yeah. Okay. The uh the Breeze team today, how many chapters does the, does the Breeze team have, and, and where are they at? Right now, um, we still got um Zone Transformer Breeze team. Yep, still in the building. That's the that's 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 the second chapter, because the first chapter was the um, Breeze team in Harlem. Second chapter was Zone Transformers. The third. Mm -hmm. You built the Rude Boy yeah, in that chapter. That's the, that's the third chapter. Third chapter is Rude Boy, Tamis, Rayvon, Monkey Mob. It, it was a whole bunch of us. Um, Rough, Nice, Ayo Mans. Um, it was a bunch. So there's a lot. And then you got crews that's under Breeze Team, too. All right. Two steps away, other groups that's downtown, that's dancing right now. Everybody is under Breeze Team, so. J Day, president yes, of the Breeze team. Uh -huh. Now you guys, you you spoke about a lot of the venues you went to, and we can catch you and you know, right. and spot the Breeze team doing their thing and performing. Talk to us about the subway stations and the venues, you know, and any memories you have of the Breeze team hitting those spots. Oh, we we hit Thirty Fourth Street over there, um, the D line, over there by um, Macy's. We hit right there. We only hit that when it's cold outside, like in January, God. February, March, we back outside. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So only them two months we had hit 34th Street or 42nd Street with a two line. Got it. So it, it, it's January and February, the normal times. Any other big stations you hit? Um, 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 Union Square. Um, 34th Street, 42nd Street. He did Chinatown, remember? Yeah, Chinatown. Um, the A line on 42nd Street. Um, yeah, that's it. You know, on the spot. And my nephews and them used to hit on the train while it's moving. <laughs> right. Talk to us about that because we, we all seen that, right. you know, performing on those poles, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my nephews and them, they, they bring that out. Who's they, they started that. Um, Rantastic, God bless his soul. He started that on the train. And, and my other nephew, Chubbs. And then Rantastic, um, brother, started doing it too. Table Fossil. So, yeah, he passed away too. So, R.I.P. to him too. You, you ever go out just to watch them? Yeah, I watch you know, them the sometimes train. do it. Yeah. Talk to us about one of the performances yeah. that stick out in your memories. Yeah, just, and now they just, do different things, right? Just just them why it's moving and you flipping and <laughs> and you just so close to people like this and not hitting them, it's like you perfect that I can't do it. I can't do it. It's a whole level of skill. Yeah, it's a whole level of skill. The even while it's moving like that, you doing a backflip, you doing, you doing hopping hands, you you rolling, you you footworking. It's crazy. Now those guys get cleared out by the cops a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They they get stopped by the cops sometimes. Sometimes the cops don't stop them. Sometimes you got good cops. Sometimes you got bad cops. But they still got to make their money. So they still be on the train. So. Right, right. And they got to do it in between stations, yeah. in between the boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to do it when it's when it's going express. <laughs> you can hit some trains, yeah. They got, they got a time limit on what they do and how they do it. So I don't know the time limit. I don't know none of that. All I know is the time limit. That outside. sounds complicated. <laughs> yeah. Like a lot of choreography going yeah. into those yeah. hitters that are on the actual subway. Yeah. So, wow. so it's like complicated. So I, I don't know nothing about that. But I only know the outside. And, right. and dancing on a platform. That's it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, on the platform. 
<laughs> Word. The platform was, yeah, that's the best. That's definitely the best. Got it. Got it. What's, what's your most memorable f performance to this day out on the streets? Like, wow, you know, uh, a huge crowd showed up. When you got up on the floor, you're like, oh, wow. Ninth Avenue Festival. <laughs> Talk to me about that. Ninth Avenue Festival. What is the Ninth Avenue Festival? They have it every year. What? All right. Um, it's a food festival they have for like two days. Start from 42nd Street to like, uh, what stop is stop? 42nd and 57. 57, yeah. Food festival. Yeah. We, used to do, we used to dance on 59th and 9th Avenue. They had a, 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 a thing where you could sit, platform on all that. People used to just come and sit down and just watch it. That was that was like a concert. We used to sleep. Like we used to sleep there to, 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 to keep the spot for the next day. So really? nobody won't get it. Wow. Word. We asleep right in that spot. Who we, who were the other street hitter crews out there, you know, that, that you would compete with just to get the the go flow committee, uh, 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 uh Fantastic Four. Uh, uh um who else? That's about it. Yeah. And one or two nights. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the street hitter world is, is unique, you know, to all these other B board oral histories that I've been doing. I mean it's um Yeah, I, I our story is different from the B boy world. The hitting world is we just got a whole different world out there. That's different from the B boys and the B girls. We just face real life. What does hitting mean to you? Hitting mean everything to me. Hitting mean, I mean everything. It's nothing I can say bad about hitting, man. Hitting, hitting is just, it's, it, it's been good to me. It's been good to me, it's been good to my family, it's been good to my friends, my nephews, everybody. And we gonna constantly still do it. Until our wheels fall off. So, I'm going to be out there. I ain't going nowhere. Uh, be, being an original Manhattanite out of Harlem, <laughs> what is how has Harlem, growing up in Harlem, impacted you? What does that mean to you? Harlem impacted me. Like, it just got me, it just showed me what life is all about, what to expect what not to expect, and what to do or what not to do. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, now you a Bronx boy, but I'm like, well, hold on, that's a different crew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you a Bronx side. Yeah, I'm a Bronx night. Yeah, so what does the Bronx mean? I was happy to move to the Bronx. I never, when I was in Harlem, the only time I came to the Bronx is when Nice were me, because Nice cousin and his aunt lived on Webster Ave. Over there at like 178th, 171st in Webster. So that's the only time I came to the Bronx from Harlem. But then <laughs> all of a sudden we moved to the fucking Bronx. Where I was going was up the block from where my sister moved at. Right. So I'm like, call it from me. And from from zone. I'm like, yo, I'm right here. 170, 169 in Morris. And from there, yeah, man, I was like, yo, I'm, I'm happy because I'm in a, I'm in Harlem to learn about my community. Now I'm in the Bronx learning about my hip hop history. I'm at the birth of hip hop now. Right. I'm in the Bronx. So I'm feeling much better now. I'm in Carlin two things already. Learning how to control my community, keep them on my side, and learn about my hip hop history from the Bronx. We did clean a lot of lots, right? Yeah. We, cleaned, a lot. we cleaned a lot of, when we moved to the Bronx, we cleaned a lot of lots for the kids. We always did community stuff. Just Talk like, to us about, you know. Just uh, like I said, um, we learned from Mr. Chick, you know what I'm saying, about the community. So once we moved to the Bronx, we just started to, to get the kids and the families to be on our side. We threw cookouts. <laughs> we just had food out there, brought everybody from downtown to be up there in the Bronx where we at. So they could see what we do. 
Everybody seen what we do. Everybody want to come. Yeah, it's free food. Come on, family, friends, everybody. And then, then now we got the whole block talking to each other. Because once we didn't, once we moved on in, nobody was talking to each other. Everybody was to themselves. That person was over here on that side of the block. But now, since we came on the block and we do all types of events and all that, and gave we gave people jobs <laughs> once we moved to the Bronx. Nice. We gave them jobs. How so? By dancing. Got it. Taking them downtown, dancing on the street. First, they parents were like, "What you mean dancing on? What you mean, huh? Like, no, nah, we it's gonna be all right. Right, right. They come home with that money." <laughs> and they happy, see? <laughs> he had to rob him still, right? <laughs> They're like, yeah, thank you so much. This going to help us. Yeah, and that's what we did. Wow. It was all about keeping the community together and not separating. So that's what I learned about the Bronx. So I brought all that to the club. Yeah. Awesome. J-Day, yes. president of the Breeze team. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is a, uh, these testimonials are important to the history of breaking, b-boying, and street dancing. Right. You know? And to all our fallen soldiers that, that passed away, OB, Jelly, Ayan, Tay Mufasa, Rantastic, you know what I'm saying? Can't forget Magic, can't forget uh, Professor Pop. Jelly. Jelly, I said jelly already. Um, all, all my peoples that, that's not here, that's, that was hit us, we love y'all. I know y'all looking down on us, and we're going to keep it going. J-Day, thank you. Peace, my brother. Peace. Peace, love, and hip-hop.